this type of documentary, that's what I believe in. And I think that mm -hmm. you kind of open to a reality that unfold in front of you, all kind of unexpected things. Sometimes it's... Uh, gifts you know from from the reality gods <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> uh, sometimes it's uh, something harsh uh, but you have to deal with it and uh, it's amazing Hey y'all, welcome to Bitch Talk. I'm your host, Erin. And I'm co-host, Ange, aka Captain Party. And for more than 10 years, the show has celebrated underrepresented voices in pop culture and beyond. But not in a snore kind of way. And that's why our listeners and followers voted us 48 Hills Best of the Bay Best Podcast in 2022 and 2023. Correct. And we're pushing for that 2024, y'all. <laughs> If you like what you hear, follow us on Instagram and check out our website, bitchtalkpodcast.com. And please rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. Honestly, we know you love judging people. We're asking you, <laughs> judge us. Judge us. Help us. And now, on with the show. Clink. Hey, Bitch Talkers. It's Erin and Ange. Straight from Zoom. <laughs> but we were just together at Costco. We were. I mean, it's already been a day and we still have a film <laughs> screening tonight for Frameline, uh, which we want to talk about a little bit. Frameline Film Fest. It is the longest running queer LGBTQIA film fest in the world. And uh, we had a great and freezing time Wednesday evening when they blocked off completely a section of Castro Street, which is kind of a main thoroughfare in San Francisco. It connects to Market Street, which is another main thoroughfare. And uh, we set up some chairs and froze our asses off and uh, did a little... Uh, uh, drinking on the streets, my favorite pastime. Drinking it on the streets. Um, but thankfully... Yeah. We were freezing our asses off, but thankfully the the pre-show and the documentary itself were hot as fuck. So that kept ah, us warm. Excuse me. Yeah. They did. They did. Um, reparations. Shout out to that uh, drag show, if you will. Uh, entertained us, the crowd, on Juneteenth, by the way, when they should have had the day off. And they they said it, but they wanted to be there for their frameline community and for the for the pride community uh, to do some drag performances, which were very fun and the music was spot on and uh then the castro theater if you don't know if you don't live in the city um the historic castro theater is being renovated right now i think until maybe either later this year or next year but the thing that's outside which is a marquee but they also have a thing called the Le the blade as we've been informed which yeah, lights up it's i beautiful. didn't know it was called the blade before this right <laughs> Look it up, guys. Um, they restored it and uh, they surprised us with lighting that up. It was beautiful. And they had, I think, drag performers on the actual bl blade slash marquee on top. Doing like a kick line. Is that what it's called? Yeah. A kick, yeah, line. kick line. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was and fun. Then there was, a, um, I think, the official like SF Pride Orchestra was playing some great music live um, for the kick line. It was just, I don't know. It's a it's another San Francisco moment and just makes us really proud to be here. Right. So. Fuck the world that thinks San Francisco <laughs> is a hellhole, which, of course, yes. you know, it's a major city. It has its faults. But San Francisco is also very, very alive, very much alive still. Um, very and then, alive. So that out, that out opening show led into the documentary Lil Nas X Long Live Montero. And it was really sweet. I liked, I'd never seen him. I, I don't even think I've ever even seen an interview of him. I haven't either, really. It was sweet hearing him talk. And he talks about his nephew, who was his first fan ever. And I don't know, it was just yeah. really good. And then seeing him on stage, like the the dichotomy of the two was really, really yeah. cool. I mean, so. you get to meet his family, most of his family. His, his dad. brothers. Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> Very entertaining. He's entertaining. I, I also said I can't wait to watch another Lil Nas X doc in 10 years just to see what the career looks like and how mm -hmm. he's feeling because he's still really new to this. I mean, he said I think he put out a song either on TikTok or YouTube or one or the other in 2019, 18. And then all of a sudden, here he is. <laughs> And he's yeah, and he's still a kid. And um, yes, when you watch a documentary, you realize that because people like to place so much power and on yes. his hands 
just from his creative artistic expression. And it's just it's just so stupid. All of it. It is. I mean, he was in college when all this was happening. Mm -hmm. And, and he he's like, what's parents? happening? He's so confused yeah. by it. It's <laughs> like, well, I might I'm going to try this for a minute. Mm -hmm. So here he is just being fabulous and really living his life out loud, which is commendable. And one of those things, and we keep talking about it, I think just it naturally comes up, but I'm just, this world is very hard right now. <laughs> it just is. But, and kids right now coming up specifically like preteen, teen, young adult, if they're allowed again and have really cool parents <laughs> or a good community, have these amazing people to be like their mentors mm -hmm. or people they look up to or music they can listen to and feel like akin with or watch a show and they feel akin with. And I'm like, man, what a world. Yeah. Like what a if, time. I wish these, we had that. Yeah. Yeah. For these younger folks. So, or just to show them what's possible. And then these kids yes. are going to push it even further. So yes. it's exciting to see what they take from this and then bring to the next generation. Yeah. And I do want to note, um, I believe I, I haven't checked this, but I'm pretty sure the Lil Nas X doc came out last year. It's already streaming. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to yeah. see it, yeah, go see it. But we just want to be in community. Frameline really did. It. I'm just I'm really proud of them. They put up they closed off that uh, street and they put up two um, not dueling, but two screens like kind of face to face. So if you couldn't be at one side of the street. Or one end of the street, you could be at the other end. And I'm like, man, I wish I'm sure it costs a lot of money. <laughs> but that would be a really cool like fall thing for the city when it's actually our summer. Yeah. Um, and it was a great turnout. I, I wasn't yes, sure what to for expect the weather. because it was cold as fuck and windy, yeah. but it was a yes. great turnout. People were in good spirits. And we, uh, if, if you haven't listened yet, we interviewed the executive director, Allegra Madsen, and we told her that we were going to be there. And we jokingly said we were going to be next to the bathrooms, but we <laughs> yes. ended up next to the bathrooms. <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. Well, I forgot that that even happened. And I remember when you looked at me, you're like, and we're next to the bathrooms. And I, at the <laughs> so moment, I'm like, excited. yeah, of course, it's great for us. But now you're reminding me, we literally said that on mic. With and how, so, yes. how clean were those porta potties? They were, nobody used the one that I went in. It was lovely. Yeah, mine was pretty lovely, except, you know, as women. <laughs> it's still a porta almost, potty. But I almost fell in head first into <laughs> the, what is the latrine or whatever the fuck dudes the bowl? pee into. Oh, that, that one, thing is. because you were squatting over. Yes. Yeah. You have to and watch like yep. trying to like, you know, anyway, get the right angles, thing. right but, angles. Also not peeing on yourself because it was dark Anyways. and the hole is really wide. So you have to like push back. A yes. Lot. Thank but you. You're always I'm always really excited when the water in the bowl is still blue, you know, from that little thing they drop in to clean it. So that means it hasn't been used. So I really appreciated that. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to move on from this. <laughs> moving on. But um, we do have an, a film to introduce. We're doing a flashback today. But if anyone's interested, it's running till the uh, 29th Frameline Film Festival in San Francisco and in Oakland. And they just have a great array of films to watch. There's there's uh, horror films. There's comedy, drama, docs, like anything and everything. So grab a ticket, meet new people, be in community um, and see a movie in a theater because it's, it actually is cool. <laughs> and just pick one at random. It, it's a lot to read when you open up the website, but just pick one at random and I, you will be, you will, you will have a good time. It's just, it's a great festival. We've already seen eight of the films that right. they're showing <laughs> and we're like going to see another one tonight. Yeah. So just, just yeah. pick one and go get out of your house and yeah, be in community. Yeah. The end. Yeah. This yeah. is the end of our Ted talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining <laughs> Now, moving on to our Flashback Wait, Friday, yes. which is why yes. we're all here today. Where are we flashing back to, Aaron? Oh, South by Southwest 2023, <laughs> which feels like a million years ago. Yes. Ange was, well, side note, Ange was reminded at Costco this morning <laughs> that it probably has been a full year since she renewed her Costco card, which was hilarious. And she was like, wait, yeah, I think it was only, it was last year that I renewed <laughs> Yeah, and it because I was flies. about to tell the register guy, like, wait, I just renewed it in May. And then I was like, oh, fuck, May of last year. Wait, and it's yeah. June. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yep, that's that's right. That's Moted. Right. Moted. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. South by Southwest 2023. 
And this documentary was uh, definitely a standout. It's called Queendom. And we were so excited to see that it was coming out in theaters and streaming uh, worldwide because the, the world needs to see this. Uh, it, yes. It's about a, um, a queer artist slash activist from Russia, yes. small town Russia. Um, and you just you just have to watch to see what what ensues in, in this person's life and the impact that they're making to this day is incredible. Yes. So yeah. uh, we were lucky enough to sit down with the director, Agnia Galdanova, and the producer, Igor Mayakotin, uh, of the documentary Queendom. And please enjoy this interview, but also stream it, uh, support this film, and support this artist. Support your LGBTQ fam. Just support them. I should say LGBTQIA and or queer. Um, they need us more than ever, I think, right now. So even just streaming a film like this is supporting the community. So please, Queendom, it, this person is really doing the, doing the thing. <laughs> yes. I can't. You have to watch the movie to understand what we're talking about because they're incredible. Yeah, it's art and it's fashion like you've never seen before. So we'll leave it yeah. at that. We'll start here with our director. Can you introduce Queendom to our audience? Uh, sure. Queendom is a documentary, feature documentary about Jenna, a young queer artist from Russia who is redefining beauty by her unique art and challenging government. Um, how did you meet Jenna and how quickly did you know you wanted to shoot a full length doc on them? Uh, we met um, when I was doing research for docu series. I wanted to do um, um, a several, I was searching for several protagonists. Uh, I thought to make like a docu series about drag queens all over Russia. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the potential protagonists. Uh, but when we met, um, we started to hang out uh, without filming. And I was just amazed by her personality and her art. Uh, so I decided to quit everybody else and just to do a, a feature about her. I'm so glad you did, because there's a lot of story to tell with, with Jenna. Um, maybe we can get our producer in this conversation. Um, I'm curious to know what the general tone of these film shoots were, because uh, you were out in public uh, and things sometimes seem to get a little aggressive. Did you ever feel like you were in danger or maybe you shouldn't be filming in the moment? Well, yes. Uh, we all the time were talking about the safety. And first of all, like for us, the main goal was the safety of Jenna, because she, uh, once she got an idea of doing something, she doesn't think, uh, uh, what, you know, what the consequences can be because she really like moving forward to make it. So here we were to, you know, to make it happen, but in a safe space. And for sure in Russia out on the street, you cannot predict, uh, what is going to happen. So we were trying to think like all possible scenarios, like if we're going to get arrested or if we're going to get beaten, uh, where is the nearby hospital? Or, um, I always was in contact with lawyers, uh, who would uh, suggest like how we should respond, uh, to this charge or this charge, because, you know, if, if they, if they, uh, arrest you, they can give you a very simple administrative charge, or maybe, you know, you, I don't know, you piss off a policeman and, uh, he gonna charge you that, you know, that you hit him with when it never happened. Mm -hmm. For example, when we were doing, um, a barbed wire, uh, performance, mm -hmm. uh, we even thought like, okay, let's not put barbed wire on this part of the arm from elbow until hand. Um, because that's where they grab you when they, when they arrest you. And if he gonna get hurt, um, he might, you know, charge us with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with this thing. Because there are, there are stories uh, in Russia that a girl throw a um, empty plastic bottle and it, touch the shoulder of the policeman and he's she's facing three years of jail mm. because of that. Were you surprised that um, Jenna's family said yes to the documentary, especially with the, some of the contentious um, interactions that they had with them? Well, we came first uh, in winter time and they were very happy to, they were very welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, then when we came back in summer, uh, well, 
they already knew that all this time we were together with Jana and filming her. And maybe there were some like moments when uh, we felt that, uh, you know, it's complicated <laughs> for all of us uh, being in the same space. But Jana was so clear with, uh, with her family. That's what she wants. Um, so we had the permission to stay even sometimes, uh, th there was never, you know, straight interaction that, uh, you should not film or anything mm. like that. But, um, you know, it was sometimes in the air, um, uh, <laughs> but, but what can we do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I also wondered if the grandparents un even understood what a document, what it means to be shooting a documentary and that you're going to be traveling around the world with this story now, just because it's kind of hard to, it seemed like it was hard for them to even compre comprehend Jenna's existence. Yeah, well, I guess from the very beginning, they were not really understanding what we we're doing because the grandfather w was saying, like, why are you filming this? Go mm. film this beauty of the region. <laughs> there is so not many things fish. to look yeah. at there. Why are, you, wh why, why are you filming, like, the dead fish? Uh, <laughs> guts? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, every time they were having questions, uh, I was openly replying, what, what is the film about and what we're going to do with it and that we're aiming kind of like big and festivals. But I mean, they don't even understand what is festival, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, whatever I say, it, I guess it's not going to be at the same level. Uh, mm -hmm. of understanding. Igor, I want to bring you into the conversation. When did you hop on this project? I joined the project in the summer of 2021, so almost two years now. And um, when Agnia has already been filming at that point, she had a sample, a, um, was about a 10-minute sample. And when I was, she was looking for a producer. And through, I used, I produced, the film that I produced before is called Welcome to Chechnya. So we had a mutual friend um, and he, she reached out and I looked at the sample. I was blown away by the cinematography, blown away by Jen and her story. And also by the fact that I saw my hometown in that footage. So I grew up in the same town as Jen. I was born and raised there and I left after high school. Um, never, I never met Jenna then because uh, I'm older. Uh, she was very little when she was uh, growing up there. And we started collaborating. It was a beautiful, beautiful process. Um, even th though we were doing it online, I'm based in, in America and Agni is based in, in Europe. But, and this is the third time we're seeing each other in person, which is so amazing. Um, but it worked out pretty well. All you needed to see was the footage of Jenna in heels on a treadmill. And yeah. I'm like, okay, yes. sold. I'm so impressed. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I have to add that uh, when... Because I was pretty desperate, I was all by myself, and uh, I didn't even understand what kind of producer I'm looking for, mm -hmm. who this person should be. And when we uh, had this talk with Igor, and when he said that he's from that town, because you have to understand it's like so far away, it's far, far east, uh, it's close to Japan. So even for people hmm. who live in Russia, like in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, when you say the name Magadan, they're like, oh my God, it's like somewhere in the middle of nowhere. There is no reason to go there. <laughs> so until today, I know only two persons uh, <laughs> yeah. from this place. <laughs> and the grandparents, that's 10% yeah, of the I mean, population. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was a sign of destiny. I didn't think, uh, you know, too long. I was like, yes, please. <laughs> Join meant the project. To be. Oh, we believe in that. Yeah, serendipity. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, um, I feel like this film is just the perfect example of you never know what you're going to get in a documentary. You plan on shooting the story of, of Jenna and then the war in Ukraine starts. And that just takes everything to a whole new spin. So can you talk about as director, as producer, how you even deal with this situation? And now it's multi, you're, you'll be filming in multiple countries now, just wrapping your head around that. Well, first of all, I have to say that uh, this type of documentary, that's what I believe in. And I think uh, there is the beauty of it that you don't script it that mm -hmm. you kind of open to a reality that unfold in front of you, all kind of unexpected things. Sometimes it's uh, 
gifts you know from from the reality gods <laughs> right <laughs> uh, sometimes it's uh, something harsh uh, but you have to deal with it and uh, that's why i actually love documentary because you yourself like you put yourself in a situation when you uh cannot predict what's going to happen mm -hmm. and uh, it's amazing this i love but what actually happened to us uh, for sure nobody thought this way when we started filming and jenna was the first person who didn't think that uh, her life gonna change so drastically mm -hmm. and i'm also grateful for trust that you know we uh, um found between each other because when uh, there was time that we decided that she has to leave country mm -hmm. um i proposed her to go to france because i have some connection with uh, mm -hmm. with france and uh, she trusted me and she said yes and now she's in an amazing spot yeah um before we wrap up this interview i i need to bring up the um music and the composer um the score with the um the uh, photo shoots and video shoots with Jenna. Can you talk about that process? And uh, the music is is um, kind of gut wrenching when you watch those pieces. We started working first with one uh, composer. His name is Toke Odin. He did a beautiful score for the film Winter Brothers. Um, it's a fiction film, and um, I was so such a fan of this uh, of this music. So I contacted him, and when he said yes, I was like, "Great, <laughs> <laughs> another sign." Mm -hmm. Yes. And then uh, um, a project joined another uh, composer who did an amazing job. Uh, his name is Damien Van der Sand. And uh, I think we have like a beautiful collaboration between them two, and uh, uh, it fits so well to uh, to the performances that we have because it's in the same time dark, but uh, also with some hope mm -hmm. and a bit weirdish and all that. Like I, I really wanted to not have a. Um, a traditional score, like, I don't know, with violence or whatever, that everybody crying. <laughs> uh, I thought that this type of music, a bit more like noise <laughs> sometimes, mm -hmm. it fits m much better to uh, what Jenna was expressing through her art. It's a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing this really beautiful story. And again, we've been talking to director Agnia Galdanova and producer Igor Mayakotin of the documentary Queendom. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for joining us on today's show. You can find more information about this episode in our show notes. If you're missing us, you can visit us at bitchtalkpodcast.com to sign up for our newsletter and buy us a cup of coffee. Did you know we're also on the radio? You can find us at bff.fm. And lastly, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. All the cool bitches are doing it. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.